And this might sound a little crazy, but what if I told you that you can love and accept the body that you're in right now, like before you lose whatever amount of weight? You can still lose that weight, but you just don't have to wait until you do to be happy. Does that sound like something you'd be interested in? Stay tuned because my guest this week is going to teach you how. Motherhood on Court. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Courtney, and if you want the best tips and strategies to help you thrive in motherhood and build a life that you want to celebrate, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. So I'm super excited this week because I am here with Courtney St. Brox. Hi. Great name. <laughs> Courtney and Courtney. Missed that. Um, so she is the boss babe behind Momfident AF or Momfident as Fox, since we are not censored here. Um, so she helps to coach women through mindset shifts to help them have confidence and love their postpartum bodies right now. Uh, so she is here to share her top four strategies that has helped her and her clients transform their lives tremendously. And if you stay tuned to the end, we have something special to give to you. So stay tuned. Awesome. All right, let's, let's pop that bottle. Let's pop that bottle. Let's pop it open. I'm glad you're opening it because... <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I don't. Nope. I don't think I ever have. So it's always just hand it over to someone grab else. and uh, <laughs> twist and hope for the best. It opens. <laughs> Woo! Now I'm ready. Right. You want to pass me your glass? <clears throat> Thank you, love. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, so before we jump into the strategies, I want to do a little myth busting. Oh, okay. Um, so I think one of the things that really holds women back from loving their bodies now is the belief that if you love your body the way it is now, you can't want to also change it. Mm -hmm. So what, yeah. what would you say to that? So um, Mom and AF, I have a whole concept in theory that's called embrace and evolve. Um, so the concept is based on the fact that if you want to evolve, that's awesome, but we want you to do it from a place of love. So I never want someone to approach their fitness goals or approach a getting healthier goal or loving themselves goal from a place where they really don't like themselves. And I think that's a lot of the times how we approach fitness, you know, wanting to change our bodies is because we don't like our bodies. And then we expect to embrace them once we reach whatever goal it is that we're trying to reach. So my concept is to look at it backwards and I actually want you to find peace with yourself first, start to love yourself first. And then if you desire a change, that's not a problem. I don't ever, you know, look down on anyone who wants to change their body. You might very well want to change your body in some way, shape or form, but I want you to come at it from a place of love and respect for the body that you already have. Because a lot of the time you think, okay, well, once I lose this amount of weight, exactly. then I'm going to be confident. But you get there and it's, you're like, it's a, it's Where's a the magical yes. transformation exactly. where all of a sudden I feel like I'm in charge of the world? Yeah. It doesn't happen that yeah. way. So this is based on personal experience. I actually was in a very, a lot smaller body at a certain point in my life. And I realized that at that point, even though I had pushed so hard to get where I wanted to, because the background of it was I didn't like myself and I was trying to get smaller, 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 I wound up at a place where I wasn't even happy when I got to the goal that I wanted to be at. And I started to scratch my head and think, well, what's the point if I'm working on all this evolution and getting stronger and trying to be healthier, but I'm not even happy with the end result. So we're sort of um, looking at it from looking at it backwards, reverse engineering and looking at how we can develop self love first. And then if you desire change, then let's go for it. Okay, so what is the first strategy that you want to talk about? Okay, so the first strategy, what I talk about a lot with a lot of the clients I work with is about the media. So I don't think it's a surprise that there's a lot of this comparison and, you know, not feeling good about yourself because you're seeing what's in the media and you're comparing yourself to it. Right. So I want all of my clients that I work with to know that we need to acknowledge the media in a, um, or have media literacy skills that are going to help us to navigate because you can't really get away from social media unless you want to get off of it completely, which is your choice if you want to. But if you like being on there for other reasons, we have to look at it with a clear lens so that we don't compare ourselves always to the things we see there. Um, I think it's very clear to most of us that if you opened up a magazine, you would see the pages in there, you would see the people, the women in there have likely been edited, photoshopped, 
airbrush. Right. They've been tweaked in some way. We kind of know that on an on unconscious and on a conscious level. But then we look at Instagram and we assume that that's reality because it's real people that are taking these pictures. But as right. social media has evolved, that's Instagram a lot of the times is edited, photoshopped, filtered, and adjusted in some way. Some people are open about it. Some people aren't. But I really think that we need to start looking at it in a way that reflects that magazine type of lens, right? It's right. It's curated. It, most of it is curated. Right. That's what I say. When you're looking at Instagram and you're looking at someone's like version of motherhood and you're like, you feel like you're less of a mom because of how great their life looks. I look at it as like, Instagram is kind of like selling you a fantasy. Like you I wouldn't know. expect your sex life to look like it is in a porno. Right. And if, exactly. if you thought somebody did, then you'd be like... They're a little bit delusional or, you know, romance doesn't happen the way it does in a movie because they're selling you a dream. And that's what yes. people are capitalizing and cashing in on Instagram. Is that they're selling you a dream. So you need to be able to separate the fantasy from the reality. And yeah, like you said, it's harder to do when you're looking at it and like, this is a real person and they're sharing parts of their real life. Mm -hmm. parts, parts of their real life. And parts that have been filtered and edited. And when Instagram first started, it wasn't really that way, but it really is that way a lot now. Yes. The porn example is a great example. Or not even porn, but even just seeing what sex is like in movies, for example, or right. any other media. If you were to look at that and then look at how come my sex life doesn't look like that? It's not steamy and he doesn't right. pick me up, you know, and carry me to the bedroom and everything's perfect. Like, Toss me up against yes, the wall. and, and it's so magical, magical you know? <laughs> Like, it's not like that in real life. No. And, but if we compare ourselves, I think we can kind of look at that and go, oh, that's a movie. But if you were really looking at that movie and going, well, why isn't mine like that? You have to have that... that tool to kind of look and go well okay so social media is not exactly the same way that it is in reality right. and that's why um i've also had clients that have struggled with either feeling comparison but feeling like jealousy or, or seeing someone who's like how come she gets to do whatever and then i always encourage them to just embrace that person like why don't you reach out to that person and say hey i've been following your instagram and i just wanted to connect and say hi guaranteed you're going to start some type of connection with that person and you're on automatically going to go oh that person is a little bit, you know, she's, she's real. She's not just this curated feed. Maybe you yeah. meet with the person and you're like, wow, this person is a lot more real than I thought on social media. We can only show so much on social media. Exactly. And I also understand that who wants to show everything that's a mess? Nobody wants to take a no. picture of their messy <laughs> kitchen and document it. No. So I think that the whole media piece, this is not new. We're starting to know now that things are really filtered, but it's just good to have the acknowledgement and recognize that all the time. If you're feeling that, oh, my body looks like this and that mom over there, her body looks awesome and you feel like you're comparing and you're feeling down on yourself, it's just knowing that, you know, people have different lives, first of all, and second of all, the media, social media in particular, has changed so much and you need to look at it a bit more like a magazine. Exactly. And if you can't follow certain people and they continually make you feel bad about yourself, just unfollow yes. them. Unfollow. Problem solved. Super easy. <laughs> Super easy. Go for it. Okay. So <laughs> number two. Number two. Okay, so number two is look, learning to shift your perspective. So, and this is about your body. So I want you to think about your body and think about an area that maybe you don't love right now about yourself. And it's okay to have areas that you may not love about yourself. For me, it's my stomach and it's a work in progress always to love this area. But what I want you to do is when you're thinking about that area or if you're frustrated or if you're looking in the mirror and you're like, ugh, like why won't this, whatever, my butt get smaller or why is this cellulite here, whatever. Women do this all the time. Think of it as a perspective shift and think about the journey that has brought you to be in the body that you're in. So whether it's for a lot of people watching, um, having babies, which changes yes. our bodies in multiple different ways, or even if it's just a fluctuation in your weight because you've gone through something, you went through something difficult in your life, or maybe you are very busy and have a lot going on and you haven't been able to focus on yourself. Or you just had a really fun summer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I want you to think Christmas about season, all even. you know, yeah, exactly. you know, <laughs> Um, so it's almost like we're thinking about gratitude here and thinking about what led us to get where we are today because chances are there's a lot of really awesome stuff that maybe have has indicated what's going on with your body, but there's probably a lot of really great stuff that has happened. So I want you to think about that area and then think about what led you to the point where your body looks like this. And there might be on this list some things that aren't happy and fun and exciting and some things that are challenging and difficult. But then you can look at it and go, okay, well, is there some changes here that I can make because I have an insecurity with X, Y, Z? So can I start moving my body a little bit more because I, you know, I feel better if I lost a few pounds? Or um, can I start looking at my stretch marks in a different way because 
I know that I've had children and that has molded and stretched and moved my body, which is fucking amazing. Right. But we have this because of the media and what we see, everyone's stomach's supposed to be flat and smooth and have no marks on it. And even in magazines and stuff like that stuff gets into your subconscious. Right. So trying to shift your perspective and think about where you've been and what you have done and what has gotten your body to that place and being a little bit grateful for that instead of just thinking about, you know, the stretch marks and that's all you focus on is, oh, I hate these stretch marks. Right. So looking at it again, behind the scenes, a little bit of gratitude, thinking about where you've been so that you can be a little more grateful for the body that you have because it's the only one you have. Yeah. And you're it, stuck here it. now. You're stuck with it here now. You can make changes if you want. Love it. Take but care yes, of it. But, but that's your body. Yes, but you might as well enjoy what you've got right now because honestly, in this second right now, your body is what it is. So embrace it. You might as well. Exactly. And you know what? If it's a healthy body, then you definitely want to be thankful for it. Because yes. I guarantee you, if you got sick tomorrow, mm. you would be less concerned about the way that your body looks and more concerned about what's going on on the inside. Yes, exactly. Number three. Okay, so number three, we sort of touched on a little bit already because we talked at the beginning about embracing first and then wanting to evolve. So I want you to make sure that you know for yourself personally that it is okay to have goals. I never mean to say to anybody that you should just give up and who cares and don't take care of yourself. Just learn to love whatever you've got. Maybe you have a weight loss goal that you want to achieve and that is absolutely fine. I want you to know it's okay to evolve. But again, we're digging into the, excuse me, we're digging into that embrace first and then evolve. It's okay to want to change. I have this question come up a lot, a couple of workshops that I did recently where people were like, you know, I, I do enjoy my body right now, but I have some goals that I want to accomplish and I'm feeling guilty for wanting to accomplish changes in my body. Exactly. Or someone who says, you know, I'm a smaller frame. So they would, for example, see someone with a larger body that's like loving and accepting and embracing and everything's great. And they are in a smaller body than that person. And they're like, well, how come I can't seem to love my body, even though it looks traditionally the way that it's supposed to look, right? And, you know, I still want to make changes, even though someone else looking at me might say, well, you're five two and you're a hundred pounds. Like, what do you have to be upset about? Right. You know, know that everyone has their ability or their desire, and they should have a desire to evolve in some way. Perhaps it's not even to do with your body. Maybe it's to do with your confidence, socially or professionally. Right. But everyone Maybe. has insecurities. Yes. Like, we even Beyonce. Do. Even Beyonce. We all do. And again, here's that like media creeps in and makes it look like everyone's uh, lives are perfect and we don't have any insecurities. But even the girl that looks like things are all going well, guaranteed she's got something that she wants to work on and evolve. I'm just like, my mind is going back to that scene in the Amy Schumer movie, I Feel Pretty. Oh, yeah. Or like Emily Rada blah blah blah, whatever her name is. I don't know. I can't say Radadowski. I don't know. And she's like, You're so perfect. And she's like, Yeah, but I have insecurities too. And it was like this mind blowing moment for Amy yes. Schumer's character. Yes. Like, Whoa. She's like, What? <laughs> Why? How could you? But this is another thing that comes up. So, on one side, it's, you know, having a bigger body, learning to love and accept that body. And people can kind of understand, like, okay, so she's insecure a little bit about her weight. She maybe wants to change her weight. But for someone who's in a smaller frame, people on the outside might think, well, you know, if you have everything's perfect with you, why would you ever have anything to be insecure about? But we're all on our own path. We are all in different bodies that are unique. Exactly. And so it's okay to want to make some type of change. You don't have to just say, I love myself, and then that's it. You know, you want to work on loving yourself, right. but it's totally okay to evolve exactly. from there. Yeah. Strategy number... Strategy number four. four. Alrighty, number four. Um, so strategy number four is um, I actually come from the fitness industry. So that's my um, expertise. And I really started getting interested in how women were working on changing their bodies. But like I said, in my own personal story as well, they would reach a goal. They would still be unhappy. They're still working on like trying to lose more weight, and five more pounds and 10 more pounds. They're never satisfied. So the, the end goal that I really want everybody to know is that everyone's body needs movement in some way, shape or form. Our bodies are designed to move. And I, I'm, I don't mean to suggest that you need to have a six pack or that you need to be a fitness competitor or um, that you need to be a certain size. But everyone's body needs to move, not for the end goal or the destination, but for the journey that you're on in life. Right. So, yeah, you might want to lose 20 pounds. That's great. But uh, strategy number four is to love the way that you're moving. So you need to find something that you love doing. Maybe weightlifting, like that's really trendy and really big right now, which is great. It's great for building muscle strength and for a lot of other reasons. But if you don't love doing that, then you're not going to do it. 
or it's going to be a lot more of an obstacle to get to the gym and actually do it because you don't love it. But if you love dancing and that's your thing, then maybe you do two Zumba classes a week and you do some stretching at home. Like you've got to figure out a movement plan that's going to work for you. Right. Or maybe, maybe you've been doing weightlifting for a while and you love it and then all of a sudden you find yourself not enjoying it anymore. Right. It's getting repetitive or you're getting bored with it and you switch to something new. Yeah, that's okay. Don't force yourself to keep doing a movement activity that you don't mm-hmm. enjoy doing anymore. Mm-hmm. I did the same types of programs for many years. And then I got into instructing and then I was teaching the same types of programs for years. And I loved it for years. But when I started to find myself not loving it quite as much and looking into other areas, I did find other things that I, I love dancing. I'm not a very good dancer, I would say, by, you know, stereotypical dance standards. But I love doing it. And I get sweaty doing it. And it gets my heart rate up if I'm really into it. You know, right. when I'm at a wedding, I'm just like busting a move and I'm sweaty as fuck. And I am probably drinking as well, but I just love dancing. I love it so much. So why would I disregard that as a form of movement when I could do that in my basement for half an hour with my daughter and really get into it and love it? Exactly. Love your movement. So that's strategy number four, because I think a lot of us hold fitness and movement as this like chore that we have to do. Right. And it's important, but it doesn't need to be a chore. Yes, you do need to do some type of resistance. So if you're not into strength training, lift your kid up and down, you know, every other day, shoulder press, squats, whatever. Right. But find a way to incorporate movement that you love to do and that's going to work for you because otherwise you won't do it. And otherwise, what's the point? If you're just like, I'm forcing myself to go to this gym. I don't enjoy it. I hate being here for an hour. So figure out a plan that's going to work for you. Right. And you know what? Maybe you've tried a couple things you haven't found one thing yet. Just keep trying keep different trying things it. until you find one that you like. You know what? This isn't bad. Yeah, this, this is, is fun. Bad. I could feel like this. I enjoy it. And maybe that's walking with your dog. Maybe it's, um, I often like incorporating movement with some type of development because I just really like personal development. So listening to a podcast while I take my dog for a walk. Or on the weekends, I try to incorporate my family. So maybe we go to a nearby like hiking trail. And incorporate it that way. It doesn't have to look like I just spent an hour in the gym and I'm sweaty and I'm taking my post-workout shake or whatever. It doesn't have to look that way. Exactly. I actually was watching, um, I don't know, one of those like Marketplace or CBS or some sort of news show where they were showcasing, you know, they had three different people and they had them each do, one day they had them do a workout, like a really hard one hour workout to show how many calories they burned in that hour. And then the next day they had them not work out, but they just had them be more active throughout the day. So taking the stairs instead of right. taking the elevator or like parking doing far some, away from the exactly, store. Exactly. Doing walking. some doing some gardening, doing some yard work. And they actually burned more calories just being more active throughout their day mm-hmm. than they did doing a really hardcore intense workout in the gym. Mm-hmm. All of them, all three. That's another great piece because it um you just touched on consistency and um of creating habits that are healthier. So Creating habits is one of the most important things. So whatever it is that you're wanting to move your body, if you just do it two times and then forget about how to incorporate it in your life, it's not probably going to work out. Right. Recently, I've been working really hard on on establishing a morning routine. And one of the pieces is that in that morning routine, if you have an hour, let's say, to try to do 10 to 20 minutes of some type of movement. And that 20 minutes or 10 minutes in that day itself doesn't really do anything. But if you get up every single morning and do whatever that is, whether it's you know, cardio or you're doing body weighted work or your push-ups or whatever has the power to change your body and to change your mind as well. Getting up and having that as part of your day, but creating that habit of doing that very small amount over time compounded. It's like interest when you have money in the bank account, exactly. right? Compounding interest over time, it creates results. If you compound a penny over and over in a day at the beginning, it doesn't really amount to much, but after time, yeah, it after really time. amounts to yeah. a lot. The so compound effect. Compound effect. So it's about finding something you love to do, building a habit around it, and knowing that that consistency, that's a great example, just being more active, using the stairs instead of the elevator, parking further away, um, walking wherever you can, for example, can really make a big difference. And that's movement being incorporated into your day. So I want you to let me know right now in the comments below which strategy you like the best or which one you're going to start with because if you try to do them all at once, you're really going to overwhelm yourself and you're going to be like, whoa, not for me. <laughs> yeah, too much. So let me know in the comments which strategy you like the best or which one you're going to try first. And if you really enjoyed this video and you want to dig a little bit deeper into the embrace and evolve with your postpartum body, Courtney has an amazing course um, called... It's called Love Your Mom Bod Now. 
Um, so she has graciously given uh, my viewers a coupon code for $30 off the program. So when you're at the checkout, I will put the link in the description below. You're going to want to enter Motherhood Uncorked. So I'll put that in the description below as well as, as the code. Um, and if you want to follow along Courtney's Instagram, because she posts some amazing stuff every day, really inspiring and encouraging. And like we said in the beginning, who you follow on social media kind of rubs off on your own mindset. So Courtney is definitely somebody you want to be following if you're trying to get yourself into a place of self-love um, and body positivity. So I will leave her Instagram handle in the description below as well. And if you haven't yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell as well so you get notified of when my new video comes out next Thursday. Cheers. Cheers.